Good Thursday morning to you. I'm here with my darling daughter, Christine, hi. who wanted to say hi. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. We're glad you could join us this morning. No, that's fine, Mom. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Technology and me do not go long. Jump on here and say hi. We came on a few minutes early so that we could uh, just say hi to everybody. We miss everybody so much and we are running out of quarantine things to do so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> as i'm sure you are too <laughs> hi melissa trying to be creative mm -hmm. and uh hi melissa my cousin good to see you this morning hey judy welcome hi hope you guys are doing good down there hi haley Hi, Haley. Haven't seen you in a long time. I hope you and your family are doing good. Mary is joining us. Hi, Christine. Tammy, one of the many Tammies at Christ Fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, are, we are Tammy loaded. We love all of them. <clears throat> we love you and we miss you guys. Yes, oh, my we do. Goodness. Cindy, good morning, Cindy. You know, I was thinking this morning when when we were getting ready, um, if you work full time out of the off out of your home, and this is probably not not too difficult for you nine o'clock. But if you're if you're retired like I am for a long time, um, it, it becomes earlier because there's morning people and then there's not morning people. So if you're a morning person, you're fine. If not, uh, thank you for getting up and being yeah. with us. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Hi, my we niece. Miss you too. How nice. Isn't this just wonderful? This is where technology makes my heart happy is that my, my family from Virginia and from Pennsylvania and friends I haven't seen for a long time, for decades literally, joined John last night as he spoke. Um, and it's just it's just wonderful. It just it feels like a, I just wish I could see your faces. I that know. would be that that would be the best part. But just to know <laughs> that you're you're there with us and sharing this Bible study is just so nice. So thank you all for being here with us. I just wanted to say <clears> hi <throat> this morning. We're so glad when you guys join us. And um, I'm going to scoot out so Mom can start teaching. But I, let's just pray before we get yeah, started. Yeah, let's do. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have together. It's such a joy to be able to join with women all around to study your word and to um, really know what you're saying to our hearts during this time and always god thank you for this platform that is available to us when we can't get together in person lord um, this great platform that connects us all across this country to um, to study your word and to delve into um, more of you and that's what we want today God open up our hearts and speak to us let your word speak to us and challenge us and uh, anoint mom as she brings the word in Jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. well you know <clears throat> I'm just humans just like you are and so after watching myself last week and you know just going over everything I wondered if it would be distracting to you ladies if I taught like this do you think it would be because when I saw my my neck I went oh my gosh um, just kidding um, I accept I accept that this is the way I look but that's not who I am <clears throat> so glad you guys are all here um, I wanted to clear up two things not clear up but just add and clarify two things from uh, from last week about the heart of a queen and the fact that you all are queens when I when I was teaching that and I did it with humor um, but I, I don't want you to I don't want you to not to be to be able to walk into the fact that each of you is a queen um, this isn't like an arrogant snooty um, idea the Bible says that we are heirs apparent to the throne of God it also says that we are um, uh, what's the uh, we are a royal priesthood um, and what that means is and what it means what that you are the queen um, in this kingdom is that we have access to the king direct access to the king we can walk right into his presence and we can speak to him we don't need uh, an ecclesiastical um, intermediary to reach the king we can go right in and that's one of the joys of being in God's kingdom and being a queen um, we are his bride we are wed to the king of kings and so it's a precious thing it's not uh, like I said snotty or arrogant um, 
I, like I said, I made a joke about being it in your home and I, I certainly believe that, but I just didn't want to be misunderstood when I, when I heard myself and I wanted to um, revisit that point. And I want you to embrace that, that that's what you are. And not only in your home and in the kingdom of God, but, but you are chosen by God and for a specific purpose, whether you're married or whether you're not, uh, no matter what your circumstance in life, that you can do what only you can do. And that makes you so special and so precious in his kingdom. And the, uh, the other thing is, we learn in, in um, serving God in his kingdom that we don't have rights, that he is the sovereign and that we bow to him always. The other point is um, the, the point about being chosen. Um, it's very important for us to know that not only did our husbands choose us if we're um, if we're married. I know Melissa, my my niece is on here and she's going to be married in September. And so she, she was chosen. Uh, he fell in love with her of all the girls uh, and she was chosen. And how wonderful that is. But it's even more wonderful to know that God chose us. We say we say in Christendom and Christianese, when did you find the Lord? I found the Lord at camp. I found the Lord in church. Uh, but that's really not true. The truth is God finds us uh, because the Bible says that we can't come to the Father, um, to, to Jesus, unless the Father draws us. In the whole, if the Holy Spirit does not woo us there and convict us, we can't get there. In other words, we just don't get to decide, well, okay, now's the day that I'm going to choose Jesus. Mm -mm, it doesn't work that way. So it makes being chosen even more important and even more precious to our spirits and, and, and uh, cherished that we hold it close, that God chose us. He called your name. He said your name and called you when you, I can remember when I heard the gospel for the first time with my heart, um, my parents were missionaries. So I, you know that I heard the gospel, but I never heard it with my spirit until January 12th, 1959 at Robert E. Lee High School. And that's the night that Jesus called my name and I ran to the front of that school and Jesus transformed me. What a precious thing to know that God came looking for us and he found us and thankfully we said yes to him. So it's just a wonderful thing. So, so both of those areas I wanted to hit again and kind of, um, and kind of reinforce. <clears throat> the scripture that we started out with, I'm going to go back to, and that is, um, Proverbs 4.23 that says, guard or keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And we talked about the word guard, keep. It's translated guard and it means um, an erect uh, sighting that you don't ever close, you don't ever go like this, then sl slumber. You, you're, you're standing erect, you're guarding. It's the most, it's so important. And, and what I, when I was praying through this, I thought about our little puppy, Henry. Henry is the most sweet little dog. He's a little Havanese. He's three years old um, and he's uh, friendly and he's laughing and, you know, dogs don't laugh, but you know what I mean? He's got a little happy personality all the time. However, if somebody jogs by our yard, um, he, he'll growl and he might bark. But if that person has a dog on a leash going by Henry's yard, Henry will start howling and barking. If a squirrel goes by or goes as on the front porch or he can see it in the tree, he's up on his hind legs. He's, he's howling real high. We're like, Henry, it's okay. It's just a squirrel. Or the worst one is a cat. If the cat next door, um, Mufasa, if he comes over and gets on the porch or gets under one of our cars, Henry goes crazy. And I've often said, you know, guys, if somebody was going to get into our house, they might be able to do that because Henry's just a little dog, but we would sure know about it. We would have a, uh, we would have a heads up, something is going on on our front porch. Even when the mail lady or the UPS driver or the FedEx guy, we hear about it. And heaven help the poor uh, pizza boy or pizza girl because he's all over them on their leg when he comes. That's sort of the idea is that 
any little thing that just out of the ordinary, we need to guard and make sure that even if it's small, we, we are aware of something that's coming into our heart, something that's invading the space that we know belongs to us and to God especially. <clears throat> so we have to be on watch and how <clears throat> because what goes in determines who we are and whether we have life and death. It's really important. It's not something simple and God put, I mean, something, um, oh, you know, just on the fly. No, it's, it's life and death. It says that it's out of the issues of life come our, from our heart. And so it's really important. So the heart is the fountainhead. If, and all the tributaries of our life go out of the fountainhead of our heart. And so if you have, if we have problems in a, in a, a tributary, you can treat the tributary and you can clean it up or, or damn it or, or, you know, whatever it has to be done, but it'll never stop the problem until you go back to the fountainhead where the tributaries flow out of to stop the problem. And it's there that God says we need to be, pay attention and be, be on guard and see, I've got to protect that. Wait a minute, I see something in there, something splash that's not supposed to be there. And that's why it's most important. So the next question is, well, why and how do we guard our heart? So I, I, I looked this up actually and found out some heart disease problems um, in our physical hearts because this goes with our physical heart as well but you can correlate things that happen that can affect your physical heart and you can apply them to what may affect our spiritual heart so the first causes of one of the first causes of heart disease is um, genetic and genetic is something that um, is passed from our parents or grandparents that we really have no control over. If you look at my, um, I have, um, uh, this one's easier. If you look at my fingers, I have arthritic fingers. You can see them in my, uh, in my joints here. And that's from my mom. My mom had arthritis in her hands and in her hips. Um, and my sister, I think all my sisters and I all have arthritis somewhere in our bodies and that's genetic. And that means that there's really nothing we can do about it except um, what we can do about it. Uh, and that's, I try to um, use my hands a lot and I walk every day for my hips. And, um, and um, I, I haven't taken anything except the things that you rub on to make it feel a little better. <clears throat> but there's nothing that I can really do about that. It's just genetic. There's genetic things that happen in our spirits. In your spiritual heart, everything, all of it is genetic. Because the Bible says that we were born into iniquity from our mother's womb. In sin did my mother conceive me. So spiritual uh, problems are all genetic. We're all born with them. And there's nothing we can do to control that. Except, and I'll get to the except at the very end of this. But what I'm saying is that we can't really say, well, you know, I don't have that problem. I don't have a sin problem. I don't have a problem with my heart. Yeah, we do. We all do. That's just part of our birth. Uh, and that came from Adam and Eve all the way down from our very first parents. Um, <clears throat> the second thing is, um, big one is smoking. And s smoking causes all kinds of heart disease. If you've ever seen a heart and lungs of someone who smoked all their life, oh my goodness, the damage that's done. And the, the reason that smoking is so damaging to the physical heart is because it introduces something foreign into the physical heart, something that doesn't belong there. Smoke into our lungs and into our heart and it causes disease. And it's a, it's a, it's a springboard to all kinds of things that it causes. Even secondary smoke, they, they've I have been told and read causes problems even if you're just around it in your office or your home fortunately I remember the old days when we used to say we'd like four for non-smoking remember those days when you had to ask and now you don't have to ask because most every place you go there is non-smoking um, fortunately and I can also remember the days of flying in the non-smoking section it was really silly because right ahead of you was a the not, if you were in the first seat of non-smoking, right ahead of you, in the very seat right in front of you, was someone who could smoke, as if that didn't affect you. But now we don't have to worry about that because we've learned how dangerous smoking is to introduce something foreign into 
our lungs and into our heart. It causes heart disease. Spiritually speaking, when we introduce a foreign influence, something that is not supposed to be with her, we allow that us uh, that secondary um, uh, pr problem to come into our heart. Um, I wrote down a few things that, that might be. My will. When we start exercising my will and that rebellious spirit starts seeping into and we start inhaling so to speak like smoke that kind of an attitude in our heart right there that introduces heart disease when we exercise that when it's not our will it's not my uh, what i want it's what god wants as we follow him <clears throat> um it's it's what we introduce in things that we read what we because what you read and what you see what you watch you can't unread and you can't unwatch you can't unsee and unfortunately the um what has been used for good which is the um the internet and um you know personal computers and those kinds of things has also introduced um subtly those things which attack pastors and moms and dads because it's done in secret because you could just open up your computer and there there can be introduced things that that you didn't even look up but they're just suddenly there on the screen and if you're curious never be curious by the way if those things come close them out right away but there's a lot of us that are curious and if that curiosity and you push that button it can open up a world of heart disease into your spirit it's foreign to the heart that god died for that we want pure to hear him and so we have to be careful about the things that we read the things that we watch um <clears throat> and the things that we allow into our um attitudes like i said rebellion and um and attitudes that don't reflect who the Lord wants us to be. Those are foreign to him and foreign to our heart. And they can destroy the heart of the queen. Because God wants the heart of the queen to be um, solely his. The next thing is obesity. Ugh, this one's so hard. Because the reason I think obesity is hard is because we have so much and you have to eat. Um, you don't have to do a lot of things, but you have to eat. And so obesity means that we just stuff ourselves with too much stuff. You know, I'm a carb queen. I love bread and donuts and pasta and all of those things which cause obesity and cause you to be overweight. I also like sugar. I love sweets. And uh, I blame my dad. That's hereditary. I'm going to plead the hereditary thing on that. My dad had to have ice cream every night, literally every night. And my mom said that every week when they would go shopping, uh, Daddy always went with her, which I thought was so cute, every Friday night. And Daddy would say, Mom or Vera, I we are not getting ice cream. And Mom said it. And every week I would say, okay, honey. And she goes, and every week he would go to the ice cream freezer and he would get out ice cream and put it in there. So she said, I just agreed with him because I knew he was going to get it because he had to have it a little bit every night. So ice cream is just part of what I love, but you have to be careful. It tastes good and it, and it packs on the pounds. And it's because it satisfies something in me from when I was a little girl, you know, ice cream with my dad and mom and having ice cream in the evenings, <clears throat> but it produces obesity and obesity produces heart problems, heart disease. Um, isn't it awful that things that are so yummy turn out to be so bad? Well, the same thing is with our spiritual life. Worldly appetites cause spiritual heart disease. We stuff our spirits with things that don't satisfy. The Bible says they satisfy for a time, but then they, they don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we just have to keep eating and eating. People... Um, we, we uh, put into our spirit stuff. If I just had this, if I just lived there, if my house was just bigger, if I had more clothes, if I had a bigger car or a nicer this, and we stuff those things into a heart that's longing for something so much better, so much more precious, and that's him. People also stuff um, into their heart, um, they stuff sex. Uh, people become sex addicts because they were looking for love, so they put something in its place when the, the, the fountainhead of love is who God is. And only when we find him do we find what real love is, then we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to find that feeling of belonging and warmth that people look. They also put work. Many, many, many women and men 
um, we call them workaholics or worth work addicts. And the work ethic is wonderful. We need more of it in our culture, but it can become just like that. It can become obesity of work and stuff. And so we stuff it into our hearts and it's it can't ever satisfy. So we just keep doing it. And, and, and at the end of the day, we're empty. We're empty with work. We're empty with stuff, things, sex, children, you know, education. You can name anything that people go after to try to fill that need, um, that, that the need that we have to be uh, um, full, uh, to be, um, what's, what's the word that I just taught on? Um, content. Content. Thank you. See, when you're old, you can't remember things. You need someone I'm to... I'm old too. <laughs> she, she has to prompt me. But yeah, contentment. It, it breeds contentment. That feeling, and that only comes, that only comes from Jesus Christ. The second, the fourth thing that produces heart disease is inactivity. Being sedentary. People that just uh, get up, get dressed, get in their car, drive to work. They're sitting down in their car. They drive to work. They... Um, they, they get out of the car, they go and they sit in their chair and then they get up and go for a half hour lunch and they come back and they sit in their chair at their computer and then they get in their car and they drive home and then they park their car and they get out and then they come and they try to make dinner and then they sit down in there and it's sedentary. There's not really a chance to exercise our body, to get the blood flowing. And that's what why exercise and, and activity is important because it feeds the heart. It makes the heart healthy when the blood goes, especially when you get the blood uh, flowing harder, when you walk faster or when you run or, or, or swim or, or whatever you may do. Um, and, but inactivity is something so pre prevalent in our culture. <clears throat> the same thing can happen spiritually where we have a sedentary spirit, where we just stop growing. We come to a plateau where we just don't do anything else and go, well, you know, this is just where it is. Uh, we, we, um, we are, we're pre, we are preoccupied. We're exhausted. We're tired because we work. So we just don't pay attention much to how our spirit is growing and we let it lapse and kind of become inactive. And that's a death knell to the spirit. Uh, if you're not growing, then you're usually going backwards. Um, that's what they say. Here's what Ezekiel says. Um, well, oh, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I'm sorry. We want to grow to maturity. We don't want to stop growing. Um, that's called a real problem. If your body stops growing, that's a disease and has to be treated. But we keep growing. Uh, but, we're, but we don't want to stay in the same place. I don't want to. I mean, Christine doesn't congratulate me when I walk down the steps by myself. Be because I'm mature, I can, I can do that. But there was a time when I was just a little girl that I maybe gotten um, a clap for that. Good girl, you made it down the stairs. Or we clap for Lincoln all the time with the things that he's doing when he's signing and when he's um, obeying and when he puts th something down, we're clapping it for him. But after a while, we don't do that because we grow, our spirits grow into maturity. We don't want to be sedentary. We're, our, we're not exercising our spiritual walk with the Lord. We don't want to be babies with pacifiers all the time. And when that happens, that produces a sedentary heart and it produces a heart that doesn't grow and it produces disease. The good news for all of those things, for genetics, and we all have that spiritually, for um, introducing um, in, uh, bad influences or foreign influences, obesity, having worldly appetites, or inactivity, having a, having a sedentary spirit, there is medication and there's surgery for for all of those in the in the um in the physical there's there's all kinds of medication for these kinds of things for smoking they those patches that you put on to stop the craving and for obesity they give you pills or shots or you get on a program or you order the food or whatever for inactivity you know you can do this you know let's go you can plug it into your computer and you can be running like this in place and doing all those things but spiritually speaking, there is also a prescription and there's also surgery. The prescription is God's word and communion with him. Uh, whenever we're in his word, which is eternal, it's the foundation of everything that we believe is God's word. So that's our protection when we're in his word every day. You know, when I was a, <clears throat> a young Christian, I had just gotten saved 
And I was so in love, so in love. And I, I've, I told, um, I told Walker this just recently. I said, my mom used to have to come in my room and say, Vicki Jean, turn off your flashlight because it was under my covers and I was in his word because I was in love and I wanted to read and know and learn everything that he had to say. And it grounded me. And then um, I was saved at Youth for Christ. And so for weeks and weeks, I would get these little um, pamphlets in the uh, in the mail and it was questions and I would have to look up the scripture to answer the question and so I learned God's word that way and it established my spiritual foundation with him God's word and it gave me a great love for his word and what it means because God's word is it never fails it never changes no matter what the world says what churches may even say the heresies I'm going to speak to that next week some of the heresies that we hear today but God's word is not ever changing it doesn't ever decide to go with the flow it is eternal and so that is the answer for all of these things if you're having trouble with influences uh, in, in your if you've introduced into your heart into your life spiritual influences that are not good the answer to that is God's Word if you have things that are you've stuffed into your life to try to satisfy that feeling God's Word is the answer for that if you have a sedentary spirit and you realize I'm not growing I'm sort of the same as I've always been or I'm not even sure where I am in the Lord then God's Word is the answer for that the surgery sometimes it gets so bad the problems with the heart can become so serious that there has to be surgery and a transplant has to be taken. Uh, when Gary years ago was in the hospital, I met a precious lady who was in um, University of Virginia Hospital and she was there for a, uh, a heart transplant and, and I think it was something, it was, was, no, it was two, it was two huge transplants and this was 20 years ago and so I thought, wow, they can transplant a heart into someone who's that ill. Yes, and, and she got her illness when she had a baby in, a, in the hospital and something happened in the hospital and her heart became um, uh, diseased from something that she caught while she was in the hospital and that broke my heart. But anyway, um, now they do that. And now they do that routinely. They transplant hearts and lungs and livers and, and everything. And so... Um, but it has to be really bad. You have to get on a list. That means there's no hope for the heart. Well, sometimes Christians get to the point where they, they give up and they go, I, I can't do this. I'm afraid and my heart has gone too far. No, it's not. Because the Bible says that in Ezekiel 36, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. So transplantation can take place in the spirit too, where the heart of the queen our hearts have to be healthy. They have to be pure. They have to be growing. They have to be <clears throat> um, full of God, not full of other stuff that we put in there. And so if, if all those things are happening, we, we, we have that heart and we have the opportunity to be what God wants us to be in the kingdom. But if we don't, don't give up. If you say, well, I don't think I'm really a queen. Yeah, you are. If you need a heart transplant, if you need something to, some, some um, uh, prescription, it's right here for you. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Um, God's unfailing love will reach you. Um, a sedentary heart, I want to go back to that because I wrote something down that's really important. <clears throat> Sometimes... We, we take a look at our life and we go, how did I get here? How did I get to this point in my life when I really am slowing down or I really don't feel the Lord or I really don't want to feel the Lord? I can remember um, after Gary died, I was in such a shock and such pain that I said to the Lord, just please don't, just don't talk to me. I just am hurting so bad. And I, I just can't hear, I don't want you to tell me what you want me to do. And I know the Lord was saying back to me, even though I couldn't hear it, I know, I know you are. And, and I'm right here beside you, little girl, it, till you get better. Um, but I, I was afraid because everything just sort of stopped. And you might be at that place where you feel afraid. But let me, 
uh, or you say, you know, why don't I want to go to church? Why don't I want to study God's word? Why don't I want to do the things that I just heard um, Vicki talking about? I want to share something with you that's really important about the heart and why it's so important as we who want to have the heart of the queen are on guard, which is how we started this. Because apostasy always starts in the heart. Always. If you find that your behavior is here, it, it's not because your behavior just started there. It's because the heart started long ago. A body can never ever go where the heart has not always gone. Declination is the last step. Staying out of church or, or going to the bars or drinking at home or introducing bad substance into your spirit or um, you know having bad thoughts or pornography or lack of reading God's word or uh, saying things and doing things that you know is not what God has called you to do as the queen of his heart and the bride who's going to marry him. That starts in the heart. Never with the... Um, behavior never that's the reason we're starting with the heart because the heart is so important the bible says out of it are the issues of life the tributaries are flowing from the fountainhead and what the lord wants us to do so much for all of us he wants us to go to the fountainhead and make sure that the beautiful precious efficacious love and blood of jesus has has cleansed that fountainhead and filled it up with himself and filled it up with his word, filled it up with his spirit so that the, the tributaries that flow out, the actions and the way we comport ourselves are reflective of the fountainhead and that's full of God. And we can all have that. So if you're at a place <clears throat> that I just described, don't be discouraged. Go back to the fountainhead. Guard your heart. Be on on guard, start, open your Bible today and begin to read his lovely words. The Bible, it, it uplifts you. It, it's the undergirding of your spirit. It does not leave you alone and neither with, with will his spirit. When we come back next week, we're going to talk about um, uh, Proverbs um, uh, 119 and also Proverbs 3. Some really wonderful things that God reveals in, uh, to, that, um, to us in that. And so thank you for listening to my stumbling <laughs> and my oldness. Uh, and I pray that your hearts were blessed and that your hearts are healthy. All of us, we want to have healthy hearts, the heart of the queen, so that we can enter into his presence uh, as his bride and that we can do what God has asked us to do in his kingdom that only you, only you can do. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious word. Thank you for how yummy it is to our spirits, Lord, how it uplifts us. We thank you so much that we are part of your kingdom, Lord, that you have deigned us to be your bride and that we are wed to you. We pray, Father, that you would help us to um, see the illumination of the things in that we heard today that, that we need to work on, whatever that might be. Or if we don't need to work on any of these things, Lord, may gratitude fill us today as we give our hearts anew and again to you, Lord. And we thank you so much that we can serve you with gladness. Thank you that you have made us who you are, who we are, because we can only do what you have made us to do. Thank you for each one of these wonderful gals that have tuned in. And I pray that this will be a day of blessing in their lives, Father. They would feel your presence very, very close and that they will know that you call them by name and speak to them through your word. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bye. I think we're trying to end. I love you all. It's already